Blood group, blood count, HIV, STD and STI. We also offer COVID testing. NextGen Lab offers a quick and reliable turnaround time as well as the conveniency of your physician accessing your results online. So there is no need to return to the lab for results collection. A friendly and confidential staff awaits you. Parking is always readily available. Call 466-1705 if you have any questions. Remember to get a referral from your doctor before visiting. The specials at Domino's are hot, hot, hot for any occasion. Hot right out of the oven. One medium, two topping pizza, and two 20-ounce Cokes, only $35. Free Coke with your lunch until 2 p.m. Small, one topping school child lunch special, only $14. Two medium, two topping pizzas, and a two-liter soda, only $69. Two large, two topping pizzas, and a two-liter soda, only $92. Oh, and the big one, baby. Free large pizza every Tuesday with your favorite two for Tuesday special. So come on down or call and order now and experience our tasty oven baked goodness. Domino's, the home of satisfaction. For hot wild, call Domino's. I love our company, Jenkins Funeral Home, because each day for over 65 years, we come to work motivated to give you first-class service. We take care of you, loved ones, during the most difficult period of your life. We remove the stress and worry that comes with losing a loved one. In fact, due to the confidence in our company, we have taken care of heads of state, those in public care, and in families from infants to grandparents, including the pre-arranged. We have been able to do this due to the acquisition of first world education, knowledge and skills, modern equipment and facilities. We are available to you 24 hours per day. At Jenkins Funeral Home, we take care of you and your loved ones. Good night, St. Kitts and Nevis, and welcome back to another episode of You Beat. I am so grateful for your listenership. Listenership, my, my list acting up there. My <laughs> I am so grateful for your listenership and for tuning in with me every week. The audience is growing. I see you. I hear you. I don't take it lightly at all. And so it's an absolute honor to be on the air. And for whatever reason you tune in, thank you very much. My co-host, Chacha and Sienna are not here with me yet, but they should be joining me shortly. And then we have a guest from the Ministry of Agriculture. It's going to be a buzzing show. We're going to talk about apiculture and agriculture that's 
bees and careers around beekeeping and opportunities for development around beekeeping i don't know nothing about bees so we're going to be learning together about bees apiculture agriculture the open day um and it's very interesting and exciting that we have these conversations because I think the beekeeper, Mr. Mono, that we have quite a young, handsome man, um, he is the only person employed in that unit. So there's potential and capacity to grow. And you know, we are always looking for opportunities for young people to diversify different sectors. That means to bring in things different, get them excited into ideas that you know agriculture is not just dirt agriculture is veterinary medicine okay may not all the things agriculture be but i'm sure agriculture is a lot of different things and one of the different things is like bees and i think we have a bee keeping association as well but when we have that guest on he'll tell us all of the good stuff all of the magic that is happening how he got started in it so if you are into agriculture or apiculture or you're just curious about the potential of young people you have a young person and you want them to know if you have a child who is a student of agriculture and they really like the subject bring them close and you know tune in so that we could learn a thing or two they might ask a question they could write in or call in 662 1065 please feel free to call in 662 1065 as well as if you have any queries or concerns please feel free to call in my goodness my goodness so that's what this show is going to be about and we're going to start that show in a bit but before we start that show i want to tell y'all about my day today oh my god it was hard like stone i was at jennifer for like seven hours seven hours um mommy's having a surgery in a few days so we had to go in early for the intake and do all of the things that you have to do you know the x-ray the the thing where they check the heart i can't remember the name of it or the letters of it but i had an incredible experience with nursing assistant isaac she was young she looked like she could have been one of my students and mommy was very irritated very um antsy hyper she was moving um and nursing assistant very young isaac was so calm and compassionate and really we find things to applaud within the medical industry and customer service at jnf but it wasn't perfect i may mean, make a life for them the, the experience wasn't perfect but it was it was really good considering the accommodations we needed i speak a lot about inclusions and making accommodations for differences and so right there at outpatient nursing assistant isaac was like she just she was really compassionate she was really kind there was another lady at outpatient like not the cashier you know those ladies that sit right there that go and write up the form the intake form and they go and look for your history and they give you the file and everything there was another lady there she's from market street i can't remember her name and her emotional and social intelligence i grew up all the time knowing my mother to be you know angela mares but as I became the young matriarch and having to get the documents together and get everything together, um, you know, just for recording purposes and prosperity, posterity, <laughs> um, I realized that my mother's name is not Angela, it's Patricia. And so just like me, you know, this your, your middle name in your first name. And so anyways so i started using her first name which is patricia but she would have been registered in the system as angela and you know she was so socially 
and emotionally intelligent and receptive when I went and explained the debacle. She was calm. She looked for it. Information that has not been filled in in 30 years. She just, you know, went and put it in. And then when we got to surgical ward, oh my God, Nurse Mills was an absolute breath of fresh air. She was charming. She was kind. She was fun loving. She was funny. Mommy is a whole katang, eh? And so she said, Michelle, you know where you're going? You want to stay? And she allowed me to be there, you know, to soothe mommy because my presence soothes her. And for me, that was compassionate accommodation. Maybe like after oh, I left because I was really tired. I was, you know, at the system in the institution for like seven hours. And then I got maybe two hours sleep, which feels amazing. And then I got back and I saw Nurse Henry, Sister Henry, and the staff and the experience so far at JNF has been, the customer service has been really, really good. I don't know if, you know, my reputation precedes me and they'd be like, okay, we want nothing to do with Michelina. And of course I have a pen and a paper because I've been to JNF quite a number of times. So I record everything. I'm generally a person that records everything. I write every single thing down. Things that you can't imagine I'm paying attention to. Even if you don't see me writing, I have a notebook in my bag. I have a notebook at home and I am writing. I do impeccable records, especially with and in systems. Because I know my personality. <laughs> And so I'm properly prepared in case of any eventuality. It doesn't always go like a hundred, but if you have to bet, bet that Michelina has a record. Especially if you see me just watching you or I am perturbed for any reason, just bet that I am keeping impeccable records. And I'm confrontational, you know? confusion when it's necessary but confrontational so I'm going to ask the question I'm going to read the policy I'm going to read the act and I'm going to engage the process if I see it is necessary yeah <laughs> but it, it today was just it was it was really really good and then we had the absolute love of my life Colin who was you know like I said everything was it was it was about a seventy five percent, a strong seventy five percent, and I almost got in like three fights at the hospital today because I was so tired. Um, my my temperament, my sensibility, everything was on e, and so somebody cut in front of me, and I was like, you know, and Colin was just there to. If I tell you that man is a hallelujah, right? God sent him. I didn't even know to pray for that man if I, j I just couldn't pray for the blessing that he is. And so he was able to be a resource for me and mommy at the hospital and provided some well-needed decorum, calm, and respectability when I was like katang. So thank you to the staff at JNF. Thank you to Colin for being the blessing I couldn't pray for and my hallelujah on every day. I really appreciate it. Um, I can see the experience I had today with JNF is that everybody is working really hard. Even the student nurses, the nursing assistant, the nurses, the doctor, everybody is working really hard. So even the things that are not working, I can't fault anybody for because being a teacher and being a part of a system that may not fix, <laughs> it, it allows me to give so much grace. So to the nursing staff, to the orderly staff, to the administrating staff, and all of the people who do things in JNF that I don't understand your assignment, the lab staff, I really appreciate you and I can see even though 
we bash you 10 out of 10. It's easy to be a critic. Thank you so much for what you do. Um, and mad shout out to the nurses there and surgical ward. It, it was just incredibly difficult and incredibly amazing at the same time. I was very nervous about leaving mommy. And, you know, then some older women at the ward, you know, they saw that I was frustrated. And they said, go ahead and leave her. We're going to take care of her. And community, inclusion, care. And so when I did my part as next of kin and daughter, and the nurses are doing their part, now we have the patients who are able to give me support as older women um, when I needed a break. When I tell all you, community, just a little bit of goodness is sufficient to make positive change happen. I witness, receive, and I'm a part of the miracle of community every day. So thank you, St. Kitts and Nevis, for loving on me. Thank you to the Ministry of Health, the staff, the support staff, the all kind of staff, however you're categorized um, while you're employed at JNF. Thank you for making the magic happen under circumstances that are not always easy. But you do it. Um, I read up there a number of times today. Those persons on the front line in medical care, caring for us, are the good of the world. I'm not sure if I said it correctly, but it's something like that. Those persons who are on the front line, giving care, are what is good for us. So... Again, I express my sincere thank you to the staff, to the community, because those women on the ward, for the time that they are there, they, they create community. And for those of us, like myself, who don't have big family of support, um, the community is an extremely appreciated resource. So thank you very much. I know there are persons at JNF right now who would be listening. God is with us. I know there are persons who have persons, loved ones at JNF right now. In Jesus' name. And to my listeners at HMP, the males and the females, good night. Good night. And I hope you had an incredible day. We woke up, we are here, where there is hope, there is a chance. Once there is life, there is hope, and so we have a chance. I want to send a special good night out to my co-hosts, Chacha, um, Jalen, and Sienna. I, I appreciate you. I see you. Thank you for adding value. And to all of us who are doing the work that is necessary. There are so much of us out here that are working and we, we don't get praised. We are not visible. There are so much of us out here who are walking through them valleys. Whew. Talking about JNF again, them, them gray corridors, I don't know who tell them paint them corridors gray. <laughs> because walking through them halls, and I've had to walk them halls with Daddy, with Ivy, and now with Mommy. Walking through them halls, them gray halls of Jen, if not easy. And then y'all have them gray. <laughs> so for whatever reason, you have to be walking through those halls, whether you have a young child or a teenager or a young family member on psyche, um, whether it's a, a mommy on maternity ward who is experiencing postpartum depression and she don't know what is happening to her or the family is witnessing and don't know what is happening and the support is not there. However you are walking through that valley, I just want to remind you that goodness and mercy is following you through the valley. All of us walk through valleys, and our valleys look different. Some of us valleys look similar, and so 
we can empathize but when your value looks similar to somebody else you can empathize you can be kind you can share a word of encouragement you can share a resource but i want us to appreciate that as we are walking through the valleys goodness and mercy are following us and the thing about a valley those of us who do a little bit of geography a valley is a place between two mountains and so as you walk through the valley and i know sometimes it's hard it's really hard to walk through the valley eh? just but if you put one foot in front of the other just a little bit of goodness a little action consistent action action ain't gonna be big steps ain't gonna be strong steps it could be weak steps it could be no step all you could do is roll blow a wind but as you walk through the valley trust that goodness and mercy is following you and understand a valley is a low place between two high places so if you're going through the valley it means that you're going to a high place it means that you're coming out because you're leaving a hill in a meadow in a valley to go to a next one this too shall pass and as you're passing remember that you're walking with goodness and mercy those are your companions it don't matter what you feel like it don't matter what you're being told it don't even matter what you see goodness and mercy psalms 23 goodness and mercy are your companions and you're walking too so it is 7:54. thank you for allowing me that rant i know that is normally not the beat for you beat but i just i just felt oh I wanted to share that because sometimes when we go in, <laughs> sometimes when we go in, we imagine that we're alone. It's impossible. Or it's too hard. But remember what a valley is. The definition of a valley is a low place between two high places. So if you're coming from one high place, continue because you shall meet another high place. Victory, peace, provision once you continue that is what you shall meet so here in studio with us tonight here in studio with us tonight here in studio with us tonight is a lovely guest that i have and i want him to introduce himself so take the mic my special guest my buzzing guest and introduce yourself All right. Good night. Good night, Michelina. Good night to the listening audience. Good night to everyone here, locally and abroad, who may be listening. My name is Monroe Tweed. I am here on behalf of the Department of Agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture, in the capacity as the beekeep, as a beekeeper and the focal point for beekeeping in the Department of Agriculture. Are you the first beekeeper in the Department of Agriculture? Uh, yes, I would say so. So you're a pioneer. Yes. You're the first so, off. Yes. Okay. Uh, with all that comes with it. Pressure and everything. That's okay. Yeah. Rem remember, when we're going through the valley, goodness and mercy. But it is very important for us, as we take on the responsibility and the hardship, to celebrate the wins. So, Mr. Monroe, you are a pioneer. So you're pioneering this new... What would you call it? Um, I wouldn't say beekeeping is new, but they, they highlight the focus uh, that the department is now and ministry is now putting on it is um, new or revitalized. It used to be through um, a collaboration with other organizations, but now the department has seen the need or the, the interest such that we are now spearheading it or pushing it directly from the department. Um, I hope that is, that is a good way to put it. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's new, but it's not new to the same case, but new to the department in that we are. And new to the ministry. Of, yes, definitely. So that's the new I was talking about. It's you're, you're a pioneer, which is brilliant. Um, I'm sure that is going to require a lot of courage. When I came in here, I was like, but Mr. Monroe, you're early. Quite impressive. And then you were not only early, you were early on, on a Zoom training session. I look on your phone because I fast. 
<laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mr. Monroe, you're here. Yep. You're in a training session? And he was like, yeah. Oh, you're not. I was like, because I always in a training session. So what got you interested in bees? Um. Generally, the St. Kitts culture is that you see a bee. Well, for me, mm -hmm. you see a bee and you run. You see a nest and you run. If it's in your house, you call some or like close. Mm -hmm. You call somebody to remove it because bees, they sting you and that's bad and dangerous. Yeah. What got you into bees? Um, I guess it's just a love of... Uh, um, a connection with nature. I kind of grew up on the, let's say, outskirts of society. Um, you from country? I could say country, yeah. And I definitely didn't grow up with neighbors, so. Yeah. So you grew up nice? <laughs> I would say yes. No, definitely, definitely. I appreciate the, the way I was brought up. And from school, So from where are you from? School, we want to know where you're from. I could say one another. Um, I'm from St. Kitts. Okay, hey, one. Tell us where the um, nice place that he grew up. Trinity. Trinity. I thought you from country country. You from no. Trinity. You from no. like the suburbs. Yeah. Okay. Just out on the hills. Okay. Yeah. Um but as a child when going to town school, we used to we have a fence on the back wall there. We had a fence and a big drain and they would always go coral eater, or what we call bibush. Sometimes we used to That's get the pink thing? Yes, that is what it is. Um, we would get bottles and we would catch the bees them and put them in the bottle. Like when they land on the flower, you quickly put them out of the bottle over it and make them fly in and then cover it up and see who's getting boy. most bees. But at this point, I can't remember if girls used to do it, but I know we used to. <laughs> we okay. used to do it. Yeah, that's just it. And then maybe high school, even high school uh, around them times. I tried, I started beekeeping, I, I got a suit, don't even remember, I don't even remember where my first suit came from. Um, I'm gonna That's say how long you're beekeeping, you don't remember? Uh, it's it, a testament to my memory, one out of the two. Okay. Um, I was 2014 or 16, something like that. And I tried um, a top bar hive in my, my yard, I had space them times, as I said, yeah, I ain't got no neighbors. So, so you actually, you were so curious about the bees, you went and researched and build a hive? It That's what you do? Friend. Yes, I, I'm not a, a woodworker, but I put together some sides. It's supposed to have an angle side, and it's supposed to have a back, and a follower board where you give them more space as they grow. How you convince your mother that you're going to get bees in she yard? You know, we had space. No, you just... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that's a mother conversation, like, why are you moving? We had animals and why is bees? Like, we had all kind of animals, you know, so why is bees? Okay, so you went on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, you built. I found some schematics or something for a top bar hive and got some lumber, try a thing, and I got some bees. I don't even remember where I get the first, the first set of bees from, honestly. Um, but put them in, I put them in, and they stayed for a few days. And then they ended up, let's not say absconding, they, they, they left. Your uh, bees run away? Yeah, they fly, fly away. away. <laughs> you know, as, as a beekeeper, especially when you're a novice, um, a lot of times dying it, you know, fortunately or unfortunately. That just goes to show where you need a little bit more knowledge or you need a little bit more, you know, practice. Initial failure is a part of the process. Exactly. So you're never good at anything when you start, so you got to be willing yeah. to fall a couple of times. And to start means you must have the courage to look foolish. Yeah, well, me had an audience that time, so... Your mommy was watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure cool. your mommy was watching and she was like, Lord, yeah. he look the bee them fly away from me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's how we started and after that I got introduced to more beekeepers and I distinctly remember we have my first like the first hive that I removed because we started removing hives. That's the culture in St. Kitts. We do hive removals to get See? bees. Mm -hmm. Are we the older persons are the in the past, they would do honey hunting or gathering, what they would call it. So you find wine hives, and you'd remove them more for the honey than really to preserve the bees as no livestock. Can I ask you a question? What's that? Because you are bringing a, a perspective that I never thought of. Remember I say, ordinarily in St. Kitts, and I can't speak to Nevis, unfortunately, um, but if I see a beehive <laughs> where I am running 
or home, the first thing I want to do, I'm thinking about, no, honey, somebody come get this for me, please, because I'm afraid and I'm frightened. So all you do is take it up and then take the honey. Yeah, like a person, you know, like everybody got a niche. So, like, there used to be a honey man on the, the, what's that, Sandang Road in your town. Mm-hmm. I think he's past. Um, on the one um, Mr. Keynes, Mr. Keynes did beekeeping, and I I go up knowing he had an apiary close to me, so I was acquainted with it. What's an apiary? Um, apiary is where you say a bee farm, where you keep multiple colonies. So mm. if you got two ap- two bees in two colonies in hives, colony is the bees, hive is the box, hive is the unit they are in. Um, that's an apiary. If you whether in your backyard, in the back of the mountain, uh, whether it's two or it's twenty or it's a hundred, that's an apiary technically. Um, yeah. So that was the culture. We kind of just go remove people bees. Yeah. Um, at a cost, most well it depends. Sometimes so it was not, and sometimes it was. But that is where I could distinctly remember where I got my first hive that I put into box and manage like I still have genetics from that 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 hive how many eight years later or something and it was on the corner of where you used to be Fortlands mm-hmm. there was a you is still there just not the idea the idea no there's a preschool they, they, they have preschool or maybe you know where you was a name okay maybe I'm mistaken the corner of the world of village school and on the corner where the one the one mm-hmm. That but you is still there, just not functional, but it deal. Like almost where the court is. No, but not not, down not here, up, you know, palm court in the junction. The yeah. top of palm court in the junction. But you we, you you we right there, just not functional, but it deal. I think uh, they're trying to fix it. Okay, I think Go they had ahead. a preschool or something in there, but I remember they had a kind of plant on the corner there, and there was a hive in there, and I remember um, the previous president of the cooperative, uh, Mr. Rogers, he would have. Me and him did that removal, and I was able to save those bees, and that, I put them in a box, and I started beekeeping from that. So I just charge people and then keep the bee and keep the honey? Well, you ain't want them, but you definitely want them gone, right? I you didn't even think about that. You, you want them out of your way? I have the expertise to move them, and if it is, you I can make an asset out of it, well, but I still have to incur costs, the box them, the, the, the nutrition, the time, the expertise, the... So if I find a hive and I want it removed, I could ask back for me, honey? Well, yeah, that's between you and whoever moving it. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know because you have to appreciate that all response as an average kittishan, not those who are highly intelligent and sensible and curious, but yeah. the average kittishan, yeah. we have a fear relationship. The culture, the response to a bee is fear. It's like we're going hiking and we see a bull over there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or even just running and you see very dom- domesticated cattle and bulls. And cattles. my first ca- ca- herd of cattle. Cattles? I heard a cattle. I know. Oh, okay. I, had, I, I had the book, you know, I had the book. I had the book. <laughs> As a you a teacher? Ma- <laughs> Girl, I used to watch that and I, I used to teach English sometimes. But what, what you call a book there with the flow on it? That used to teach Studium book? Companion? Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> I had yeah. the Zoom and Companion. That's what but it is. So, if I see a herd of cattle or a herd of book, leave me alone. Right, you're going to slay. Go ahead, go ahead. A lot of them in the mountain, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you silence, brother. I was in class, <laughs> okay. The bright type. Continue, Anyways. Continue. So, if I see a lot of cattle in the mountain and so, when I'm running, mm-hmm. the, my first instinct is to stand up and turn back. And if I see some Ross students, I might try to run with them. <laughs> that's, that's the whole strategy. Just stand up and wait till I see a Ross student come <laughs> and like cross with them. Once. Yeah. Or ask them what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but with wildlife or with animals, I, I think if we are honest as a Kittishan people, it's only in the last 10 years or 15 years, we start to let dog come inside. We generally did not we have did a culture. <laughs> you don't let dog come inside. Mm-hmm. See, uh, uh, n- some people, lo- lots of, per- well, not lots of them, but there's a part of the society now where, you know, they have 
domesticated their dogs where their dogs is a part of their family and the dog come inside and they spend money and carry vet and spend money and you know buy food and so i am not of that mm -hmm. ilk I, I, I can't imagine it um because i was socialized that the dog's supposed to be in the yard and it's supposed to protect the family and me had no yard for no dog so the dog if i see a dog it trying to bite me right mm -hmm. so our relationship with husbandry that aspect of agriculture the ordinary person is one that is very fear-based i'm afraid of the dog i'm afraid of the cow i'm afraid of animals in numbers i'm afraid of bees mm -hmm. even a duck like i've never been around ducks but i'm sure if i go on a duck farm i run in because you know it cracked too hard or chicken even like chicken like i'm afraid of the chicken See, I know you're watching me like you're not afraid <laughs> of the chicken. Maybe it's because I come from tongue. Yeah, probably. And you know, there was just concrete. chicken all around, you know? So, like, you can't fear them, like... Yeah, but, like, if one pass in you and she got she babies, like, you're not Oh, uh, okay, so, no, like... they could get aggressive. They, they do get aggressive about and their fly babies. Upon but you. you just tend to, like, you know? If you still walk to them, they still run back, you know? So, I, I wouldn't really say, like, I fear chicken, but... See, I know you're afraid chicken range. you afraid chicken? <laughs> the babies. <laughs> when they got the babies, you free them. Yeah, so you yeah. see that Mr. Tweed, yeah, our respect, respect <laughs> yeah. So Mr. Tweed, our ordinary relationship with animals mm -hmm. is, I would say, very fear-based. And then when it comes to farming, I think we are no raising our consciousness that you know agriculture, the dirt, food production, agro processing is not for not bright persons because you know back in the sugar industry when you didn't attain a certain level of education you had to go cut cane and we mm -hmm. used to say if you ain't learn your lesson you're going to cut cane or you're going to work in the factory and so we demonized from the classroom and the high places in society agriculture now we're getting a little sensible we're trying to reverse that but it's something you have to do with the minds of the people before you get the hands and the heart into it. Agriculture is life. From, from water security to, to the efficient use of land. To bees. Respect for your resources, sustainability. Agriculture could tie, not could, agriculture ties into all of that, but as you say, it's the mindset. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not the mindset out of willfulness the generation before taught us if you don't do good in school these are the things you're going to be subject to and so they demonized it we inherited that mindset and now you're trying to change the mindset it's going to take as much work you have to change the culture before you could change the heart and the hands towards it because you can't go down mm -hmm. to them bank girls and say, well, we're going farm, you know. Mm -hmm. What? Not cute. So what can happen to me here? And the nails. And the nails. <laughs> so, and I think you being here is a part of changing the culture of, so that we understand the benefits of agriculture and the opportunities of agriculture. Right? Mm -hmm. So are you a bee hunter? At this point, I don't say no. No, I, I, I like the people beekeeping removal work. I, I, I prefer to pass it on to somebody else who has the time, capacity, and willing. Yeah, it, I get a call. <laughs> you, you're available. I know you could do it. I call you. I call you. I call somebody else and say, this is the case. Could you please call this person? Or could you please call that person and see if you could do it? They got a hive that needs removal. I, 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 most of the times, I don't have the time. Okay. I don't. I don't. I juggle in a few things. I don't have the time to go and. Is that the time or the resources where I transport with it? You know, so I'm willing. Where I would like to say I pass that. I, I, I don't need to hunt hives to have hives. And honey production isn't top on my list right now, so if if it's honey production, well then I in, I cannot or will not rely on taking four hours to remove a hive to that might give me honey or might not because when I don't tear down your roof, your whatever, your whatever, 
So they're gonna put it back together most times and fought. Some bees that got a bottle of honey, a half a bottle of honey, depending on the season. It's not economical for me. What it, is it has its viabilities, but your pasta. It, it depends. Yeah, it depends on how you want to, as you say, how you want to structure your business or your time. If you have the time, it's worth it for you. If you have the resources or you have an objective that that suits well and fine, but ain't for everybody. What is beekeeping? Okay, S simply put, beekeeping is the maintenance of bees. Usually in, in some kind of cavity, whether it is a box, whether it is a barrel or whatever, something that is suitable space and they have a preferred, studies have shown they have a preferred dimension, a preferred, not dimension, a preferred capacity around 30 gallons or less. You know? mm. So the, a certain volume is suitable just because where bees evolve or come from, you know. And tell me about the different type of hives. Um, types in terms of structures. Okay, so stationary, migratory. Um, well, those are more production systems in in the larger world. So teach world. me, Mister Tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hives. A hive, as I said, is the the physical um body, the the box. And prior to probably the nineteen hundred, with Lang Reverend Langstroth, he was an American beekeeper that pioneered. You see you that? You can't go study agriculture yet? Besides CFPC, no. Um, a little online course and so but Beyond that, no. Um, there's a lot of information floating around, once you? And we, we got this thing at the fingertips, you know? Called the internet? Yeah. Um, my, my, my data is YouTube, you know? My, my, no, my, you my just, I'm, I'm very YouTube. impressed. You seem knowledgeable. You seem young. Yeah. You the, look bright. The brain walking, kind of. You're the brain walking. Kind of. And the way you just kind of like put me in check, like beekeeping is. I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, he just put me in place. Like the beekeeping thing is more than just removing hives. You know, there is a business, there is government interest, there is a department in the ministry to develop, and I'm working on all of these things. So the rudimentary, basic thing that you all think be keeping is yeah that could be done too but there are systems and and businesses that could be developed and and i'm hearing all like okay take off your glasses and pay attention michelina because <laughs> this young man ain't come to play um okay um i got you see it that way um kind of let me lose the chain of thought sorry yeah. no the different no types of hives Okay, yes, as I was saying, a hive is the physical mm -hmm. structure. And prior to about the 1800s with Reverend Langstroth, an American beekeeper who pioneered the Langstroth system, which is, you see them, lot of them rectangular boxes that you would see persons stack and mm -hmm. have bees in? That is usually a Langstroth system, which has removable hives, removable frames that the bees would build their comb, which is the wax that holds all, whether it's their eggs, their larvae, or... Um, the resources. Whether Remember, it's the average kitchen would be afraid of bees. So you're talking, eh, and okay, I'm just sorry. like, there's I'm no the way I am going to no be okay. high for nobody to show me nothing like that. That has to be a whole adventure. And yeah. Okay. That could be a tour. That, that could be like a cruise ship it, it tour. It will happen. It, it is the development of the sector is moving towards that. There are some persons who are currently doing it um, nice. at different levels. But all it, okay, basically, the hive is the box, and prior to them times, it was re it was not able to move. It was just like you have a, a hive in a container somewhere, and most times you have to destroy it to get the honey, and then you got to do it all over again. The bees in the wild would swarm, and that is their way of reproducing. They would occupy that, ha that cavity again, and then after the spring, when you get, depending on the geographic area, whether it's cold, per cold places or warmer places, you would, once ever, once you feel, uh, you should know if you're keeping bees long enough in that management system, when bees would generally produce honey, after that point, you would go in, you would most likely have to destroy it to extract that honey. After that point, you know, you, you don't have a hive. You, you, they might survive or you might damage the queen or you might damage something that is important that they are not able to come back. You might raid, raid them of all their stores so they are not able 
they do not have enough food to really sustain themselves. So it's like the decimating St. Kitts, mashing up your hospital, mashing up your school, mashing up everything, yeah. and then starting back again. So it's yeah. like you mash up the city. Wonderful. And so all the infrastructure gone. From gone. Us, and we don't have the capacity to build it back. We don't have enough nutrition. So we to just start wax. to eat each other or just jump in the sea? Oh, we're going to starve. But they, in their case, they're going to starve. Okay. I, I'm trying to make sense of it because remember, I'm not mm-hmm. be smart. So I'm like, what are you talking about? What is a cavity? I know that's the dentist thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have to remember, like, not all of us have the understanding. So you have to connect it as a teacher. Yeah. Um, one of the ways to from. learn is to connect things, co- connect ideas to things that you know, right? True. So cavity, he mean, like, that's a city. And so the, yeah, the resource, the space, so it's like we hospital and we school. What would happen if you break down all of these things? Like, we got a little hurricane and some roof come off. We're devastated, you know? So, so imagine if you break down all of those things, what yeah, that yeah. does to us. So. I localize it a little more. I like to say the comb is the pantry. Mm-hmm. The comb is the cupboards then. Imagine you got a house, okay, you still got the hive, which is the outside. But why inside there? You? You you're going to store your things on the ground? Only so much things to go on the ground, so you need comb, which can then you could put, you could put your babies them to rest in the crib, or you could put your food in the pantry. You could co- cap off your 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 honey with wax, so now your your things seal for so the winter. So they build a city. Exactly, and the city has expense. It takes nutrition to build wax. It mm, takes input nice. to build wax. Okay, so we're going to take a short commercial break and DJ Rinch is going to help us with that. And then we will be back. For, for all your laboratory needs, Next Gen Lab on Upper Shaw Avenue in the ICG building is your best choice. Next Gen Lab is a gold standard comprehensive lab that offers a wide range of tests including liver, kidney, thyroid function, urine and stool, blood group, blood count, HIV, STD, and STI. We also offer COVID testing. NextGen Lab offers a quick and reliable turnaround time, as well as the conveniency of your physician accessing your results online. So there is no need to return to the lab for results collection. A friendly and confidential staff awaits you. Parking is always readily available. Call 466-1705 if you have any questions. Remember to get a referral from your doctor before visiting. The specials at Domino's are hot, hot, hot for any occasion. Hot right out of the oven. One medium, two topping pizza, and two 20-ounce Cokes, only $35. Free Coke with your lunch until 2 p.m. Small, one topping school child lunch special, only $14. Two medium, two topping pizzas, and a two-liter soda, only $69. Two large, two topping pizzas, and a two-liter soda, only $92. Oh, and the big one, baby, free lunch pizza every Tuesday with your favorite two for Tuesday special. So come on down or call and order now and experience our tasty oven-baked goodness. Domino's, the home of satisfaction. For hot wow, call Domino's. I love our company, Jenkins Funeral Home, because each day for over 65 years, we come to work motivated to give you first-class service. We take care of you and your loved ones during the most difficult period of your life. We remove the stress and worry that comes with losing a loved one. In fact, due to the confidence in our company, we have taken care of heads of state, those in public care, and in families from infants to grandparents, including the pre-arranged. We have been able to do this due to the acquisition of first world education, knowledge and skills, modern equipment and facilities. We are available to you 24 hours per day. At Jenkins Funeral Home, we take care of you and your loved ones. Diamond Security Services Limited is seeking individuals for full-time employment. Positions are available for security officers. Interested persons can visit our office between the hours of 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Thursday 
at the C.A. Paul Southwell Industrial Site, Bastyr. Please bring a police record. For more information, persons can call 465-0911. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> so he said he's past removing hives, correct? Yeah, for okay. the most part. I will do it uh, when, when I can, but uh, you know, catch me running, running down hive removals for most of it, personally, okay. for personal gain. Uh. And just to understand you better, you still plan to stay within these beekeeping categories? Yeah, beekeeping has more to offer, more to be developed. Uh, I don't want to say that. Um, there's more to be developed. There's definitely more to be done in beekeeping, and there's a whole lot of potential and a whole lot of work to be done, a whole lot of opportunity. Beekeeping, we need more beekeepers. We need more well-managed colonies. We, therefore, we need the support and the inputs. We need persons who can really either make them, make it economical to have them on island. We still need certain niche markets to be fulfilled in beekeeping. Um, honey production is not what it could be, so we need beekeepers that could just understand what it takes to produce honey. We have the opportunity to do local wax, bee bee beeswax, at a premium price. Um, what do we use beeswax for ordinarily that people... Depends on who, who the we is. Um, as a beekeeper, you could put it back into your system to produce foundation, make it easier for bees to produce comb, so it lightens that burden of rebuilding that infrastructure we talked about earlier. So is it giving um, them concrete and cement? Yeah, just a little that? head start, like mm, giving them the frame. If, if, a little more than that. If, if as I said, if the comb is, if the cells are the comb is your pantry, let me say you, you give them all the lumber. You, you give them the lumber. All mm. they got to know is farm it out to what they need and add some more to it. And we could um, use wax for candle making? Yep, candle making, you can use it in cosmetics, so the lip gloss, the lipstick, um, the mascara, the hair products, all those kind of things that need a little lip, that need some kind of fat to to bind it. Soaps. We could use it in, um, yeah, I was thinking about soaps. Yep, definitely. We could use it in the textile industry, so instead of Mr. Widdison for... Caribel Batik importing wax, we could have yeah, a, lo yeah. a local beekeeper get wax. Definitely. And so it keeps the money We're cross sectors, cross industry circulating in tickets. Because I, I spent a lot of years working at Caribel Batik. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very familiar about how we make the local batik. And I know you have to heat up the wax and put in your tijante yep. or your, your stamp. And so I'm here thinking like, that, yes, that type is, of wax? That is definitely on the table, and I have, they've approached, uh, they have approached me, and they've approached other members about it. The problem is, wax is... Consistency? I no, no, no. I wouldn't say the problem. Um, the matter is that wax is expensive for bees, in that it is nutritionally expensive. It takes a lot of carbohydrates to make wax. So if it's 10 pounds of honey or 10 pounds of um, sugar syrup, nectar, whatever is that carbohydrate sort, that sugar sort, to produce one pound of wax. So as a beekeeper, that has a cost. Are you going to... Prostitute your bees for wax. And they can only produce so much in, it in their lifestyle. So is it viable for you to say, okay, I'm going to, to sell this wax for, say, $30 a pound, Whereas it takes me about, they uh, yeah, want start the maths of a colleague on me, but it's just a matter if it's feasible for you to. I want the maths because your colleagues might not like the math, but there are other people who need the math. Um, so thirty dollars okay, no, a pound to sell and three hundred to make. No, not about three hundred. Maybe it depends on the season. It, it might be thirty, it might be twenty, it might be forty or fifty to produce the pound. It just so the wax is not like waste no it is deliberately produced they have glands like how we have sweat glands they produce say maybe one two three six six flakes of wax on the bottom of the bees during a specific age of the bees and during that period of time they would use that 
influx of carbohydrates to then make the wax because it's basically fats like how we make ear wax mm -hmm. it is it is from the carbohydrates then make it into a soluble fat and then there are other things that we could do with the wax us humans take their wax to make like soaps yeah so the african soaps that cut kind of the black soap mm -hmm. i know it's made from wax yeah definitely um you could add add wax to a lot of cosmetics because they need that base i think they need that fat base or that that lipid base as i said um and then deodorant as well no I, i've seen i got the chance to go to st lucia for beekeeping and uh, i did see a, um a colleague doing wax um be happy or be natural they do they do wax they do candles they do deodorant lip balm all those kind of things so i would believe so um it's just if it's economical for you or how you run your system it, mm -hmm. yeah it could be a case where okay we're gonna produce honey and then when the honey is done we're gonna scrap all our comb break down our colonies to more dense make them more congested and then all that wax that we would have taken back from them you can then render which is to melt and purify and you would have wax if you want to run your management system like that so you get honey in the first quarter and then you might get wax down in the last quarter so then your bees have less wax to guard during the times when they are not as strong when there is a dearth an absence of nutrition you could run it like that but you gotta be conscious of that you have to know you have to have an understanding of bee biology and an understanding of bear behavior so then you could we as humans could best utilize their tendencies for our purposes. That and is what theirs. management is. And theirs. I, I, I'm not sure if you're yourself aware, but I hear you saying and speaking to heavily a protection of the bees as well. And so in everything you're doing, you're like, but the bees could use it too. But it's costly for the bees too. And so I'm not going to take this for the bees because then it makes it easier for the bees. So you're very protective of the bee and the hives and not just to prostitute them for using their resources for a dollar. Yeah, that is what management should be. The good the good stewardship of the resource that is livestock, that is a bee, you know, like just like how animals should be kept a certain way or a certain standard or you know, sometimes we fall short for faults of our own or no fault of our own, but that is what it should be. Say that again? Sometimes very you fall smart, you know, the, 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 what management is. You hear it, Anciana? <laughs> I could, it's like, what he do? It, 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 this, this, this young man, Mr. Tweedy, come out to play with us at all. It's any good management thing there. Let me write it down. Let <laughs> Auntie Michi write it down. Uh, I guess the brain just, the brain just laps, you know? Can't you remember. say, you, you're acting I, nice. I said <laughs> that management should be the good stewardship of the resources we have whether it is um, livestock or, or crops, and sometimes we fall short to mm -hmm. no fault of our own or fault of our own. Sometimes we know better and we can. We, we don't do better, and sometimes we know better and we can do better. You're going to reach far, you know, Mr. Tweed? Uh, far if, and... If, if we got it, if we... No, if you it. stay in St. Kitts, no. No, 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 St. Kitts in... If you stay in St. Kitts, you are going mm. to do incredible exploits for us don't mind the frustration you are a pioneer and I also go I ahead i also Anna. say you said like sick is saying what i mean yeah. you got sick is saying what i mean oh the little just like me worried about that I, 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 I no problem so you but know i know also heard you said like you want to build the industry i love i love i love, I love, I love uh, uh, land of beauty yeah, so I you like, love like, saying it's young going nowhere so we ain't gonna worry his, about the uh, brain drain with you people them my Minivis people them come for me after this, you know? So we ain't gonna worry about brain drain with you, you ain't going nowhere. Um, no, man thinks so. And you gonna could but if I do it won't feel be for long man. It won't be for too long. It won't be for too long. So Saint Kitts and Nevis, I hope you're listening, especially the leaders in the tourism and agriculture, apiculture sector. We have a young man who's willing, um, and passionate passionate and competent i am always amazed when i meet persons who are competent we often applaud those who are loudest you ever be in a meeting or in a room and the person that is the loudest leads mm -hmm. and their loudness doesn't always 
translate to competence. So their leadership is often fuddled with a lot of nonsensical output and outcome because they're not competent, they're just low, they just talk the most, they just stand up the most, they know how to masquerade and to perform. But you're smart. Yeah. And that's very well, refreshing. Definitely, I would say, okay. Uh, sometimes I say me smart, I'm intelligent, but... Um, you okay. uh, hear, you hear how he's just <laughs> dealing with anti Mishi? <laughs> see, under your seat, right? Hey, me alone. See, under your seat? I see it. Okay, but you no, see him dealing with I said that because Mishi. sometimes it takes more than the, the, the idea to get implemented or get happen, you know? Like, realistically, because I could sit down with you here and make a blueprint but then why it takes to really get that blueprint done? Sometimes that's really the barrier there. But you just tell me you just come from farm. We need to say that. But we need to say that because <laughs> young people listening, I think but we yeah. think we need to hide our successes and our accomplishment. But you are a pioneer and, and the responsibility of a pioneer is visibility. And visibility doesn't mean arrogance. Visibility means fortunately and unfortunately you become the map because okay. if if you want to work in agriculture the ministry if you want to develop professionally and personally the management you are the one that just say management is good stewardship and when we are given the responsibility and the opportunity of leadership visibility is a very important component we, we like to say may want yeah, nobody know, yeah, may want nobody but but it is important because when you are a pioneer it means that you act as a map yeah. and we we don't we are not told enough of that and because you act as a map and you act as a light people going to be envious yeah. people going to bad mind you but it comes with the territory. Yeah. It must happen. It has to happen. And with all of the bad, you're going to get all of the good. Just know you have to get all of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. You can't expect people to yes. read, read a closed map. Okay. When you are a pioneer, visibility and amplification are important. Because now I think in the projects that I'm working on and maturing them, I have to tell them about beekeeping, but I have to call your name. And then I have to tell the agriculture teacher that we could carry them by your farm or we could carry them up the ministry. Visibility is important if you want the industry to develop. And mm. speaking about developing the industry, you sound quite knowledgeable about beekeeping. So have you ever thought about like... I don't know, I guess bringing on youth and trying to teach them about beekeeping because personally, like, I didn't know this was a whole thing in St. Kitts until just now. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I think, like, and I'm a youth, like, I'm quite young. She's so 19. I, yes. <laughs> so, I think, like, I don't want to say, like, I'm speaking for you, but if I don't know, what are the chances that the other youths know? Like, mm -hmm. make it available, make it visible, right. and then there, that's a clear opportunity. Um, Yes, I have thought about it and um, working on it and will continue to work on it. Not alone, but um, collectively, one of those things I would like to see, and I hope hopefully it will be done to the Department of Agriculture also, is demonstration sites. So, um, open there, you'll come and you'll see a small thing. And then hopefully we can have a practical session too, so persons can get some knowledge um, maybe have some exposure. Persons who are into beekeeping can come and get some training. Um, the department will call them farmer field schools. But it's just a simple way to get persons... Visibility. Get persons trained and get persons acclimated to this, this um, opportunity or this discipline within agriculture. Mm -hmm. Because... This discipline, I like that. You hear him? Gosh. We, we can't... Sometimes you can't get to all the farmers, but if you can make a centralized place and then the farmers can come there, you can have a class. You can have a, just like you, you saw, I was on the Zoom class. There was maybe 19 persons on, and then persons in person. Or even so like, we have this thing about eco and environmental and young people and a lot of money going to a lot of different things. The deputy prime minister just signed a memorandum with one of the country in the East to you know develop alternative clean energy um hmm? there are systems of connection with bees What's and alternative about? and clean energy 
I mean, what I kind of, high, what kind of clean energy? I, I don't know what they said they're gonna do. They take the yeah. money from Saudi Arabia. Is that they diesel? tell us that, is that diesel or is that solar? Um, I, I think something to do with the power plant. They ain't they get the whole document to read. When I just read the scan nice, they don't really tell us everything. As I was just saying the little thing that they tell us. Ah. They didn't tell us everything. So I'm trying to make it so nice and you're asking me hard questions. <laughs> you put information out to the public. No, but it the, the, the Prime Minister is the one wherever he be. He put it up on the Facebook and he said, thank you, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Acting Minister, for signing the memorandum. We just gave $40 million for so and so and clean energy and so on. You need to read the things, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the, one of the things I learned as an educator um, is the concept of multidisciplinarities. And these are very community oriented i don't know about bees in real life if i see a real bee i am running but the sociology of bees is something that is very fascinating to me because they exist in community and yeah. community is a principle of mine village is a value of mine i don't want the real bee but the sociology and the science of the bees lifestyle, they, they, yeah the they. lifestyle of bees is something that i'm very in tune to would have read extensively about not the real bee mine are running from the real bee okay. but the, the sociology you speak about the biology of bees yeah. and the what else But I like the sociology. So the biology and the sociology of bees. Okay. They're, they're very much yeah, they're brilliant. If we could live like bees, our productivity and output would be phenomenal. They are grouped Definitely. by... I, I have a community mm -hmm. and the bee is one of our guiding principles and our symbols because of how they live together. The significance of each bee is valuable. Yeah. Each bee no matter where you are on the hierarchy, and there is a hierarchy, adds value to the output. And so community and how we live with one another using the bee as a model. Fantastic. But what they do for the environment, you know, there, there is a lot of connection between what they Definitely. do for the environment that we don't speak a lot about because, you know, we're just developing... Um, our understanding and appreciation of bees systematically, as you say, bee keeping is not new. We're just developing system and economies around it. Definitely, um, they're what the bees are super organisms, as you call them. They, mm -hmm. they live in colonies, community. So they have a communal nature. Use social uh, if you want to get scientific. That is the term for those yeah um, organisms that have that ten, not a hundred. To they don't thrive of alone. Of organisms, exactly. There, there is no such thing as a lone bee that would be successful. It cannot happen. Exactly. Well, well, not honey bees, but there are solitary bees. There are definitely there are twenty thousand different kinds of bees. Only six of them. You see how bees. smart he is. He just kind yeah, of. Yeah, he's just thinking he's one bee. <laughs> yeah, he just put <laughs> anti <laughs> in place. He can't even let me in a straight with the point. He's just like, well, anti <laughs> I like you, Mr. Tweed. You have to come back, okay? Go ahead. Um, yeah, long story short, they're, they're communal organisms and they, they've, let's say, evolved to be like that based on their climate coming out of cold. And they do well because of the commu the, that communal um, relationship. Uh, I remember one of the questions were to be the cast of bees. So they, when you say cast, it's like groups. Bees have, well, bees that work in communities have three castes. So it would be a drone, which is a male, a worker, which is an infertile female under normal conditions, and then a laying queen under healthy conditions. So drones have their roles, workers have their wor roles, and the queen has their her role. The drone is responsible for mating with virgin queens, so he's responsible for carrying out, for passing on genetics. And it's usually the queen that is his mother, he has 100% of his mother's genetics, so it's like a clone. We won't get too deep in the science, but then workers, they do all the work from start to finish. They, from they emerge out of their cells, which is in the comb, they're responsible for cleaning inside, they're responsible for packing away nutrition, then they're responsible for garden, wax production before that, 
and then they're responsible for foraging, whether it's water, nectar, or pollen. And what I love about bee communities is that um, no job is insignificant. In the human culture, we'd be like, you just like, yeah, you just a cleaner. But mm. it's... But also, everyone has the time. Because as a worker, you go through the stages. Mm -hmm. You work inside until you work your way out, and you work your way to death. But as you pass through the age, you have a stage. And you move on, and you do this, and you graduate to this, and you graduate to this, until you have done all the roles as a worker. For the queen, her role is complex yet simple. <laughs> you know? But she does do, have babies? She, she is the egg laying machine. That's her responsibility, and she balances the hive with hormones. Well, with pheromones. Hormones are internal chemicals, and pheromones would be the external ones, the ones that pass by touch or by passing or saliva, that kind of thing. Hmm. So. And then you said one that, ha m like, does the baby make in action with her? What, what's that? Um, so when bees reproduce, do you get a virgin queen that would then go out to meet. Usually she's, usually, okay, perfect. So about this time of year, and I've noticed it from like, for some reason this year is a bit different. From December to spring, when spring is on, whenever our spring is, until about April, May, until about May, maybe June, you will have swarms, which is when you see those clump of bees hanging uh, over by Ready Fire on the line. Uh, Remember, we ain't trying to school, see yeah. no bee, no? <laughs> <laughs> we, ain't trying, we trying to well, run when we see th bee. Those are the most recent mm -hmm. um, big things that I saw. Um, so that is how bees reproduce. The older queen would go out, she would take a certain percentage of the bees, and then she would leave young queens in the hive to emerge out of their cells, do their battle, and then come and... So they have to battle to be queen? Well, somebody got to win... For, for insurance, there's more than one mm, virgin queen left or cell. Really? So they have potential for, you know, things to happen. So it, must be fa it must be fascinating watching your bees and learning life from oh, yeah. them. And you just tell Sometimes me, like, they have to battle. Sometimes you just get distracted, you know. You, you, it's one of them things you could just... Some people say it soothes you, you know. It's like, okay, you just fade out the world and you're in your bees. Once you get past the buzzing, sometimes you got a lot of buzzing in you, around you, you know. But once you get past that, and you focus on what you're doing. Cause you, you shouldn't go in your hive for no reason. You go in your hive to do something. So you focus on what you're doing. You do what you're doing, and you just kind of focus on that job of everything else. You do what you're doing. So and there are a number of virgin queens, and there must be a battle, too. Yeah, it's either that, or you're gonna have more than one swarm, which. And each queen gonna have she own swarm. We don't mix up. There is no number two. Um. That's technical. You can have more than one queens in one swarm. You can have more than one swarms out, swarm out of the same hive. Mm. It's just circumstantial. Mm. We may think we need to have a beekeeping course and ear right now. But I just... I yeah. I find, I find you, you're, you're dealing with me very hard. <laughs> not at all, not I at just, all. I'm no, just telling just you. Not you at know? all. Not in hand, not in hand. If somebody is interested in beekeeping, how do they get started? What do you recommend? Um, I recommend getting the knowledge first. Mm -hmm. So whoever you're going to do it, whether you're going to get a mentor, someone that's practically doing it, whether you're, you're a fast learner or a good learner, you can do it through online, through YouTube or through online forums. Um, I would definitely recommend you get the knowledge first because one thing globally, person who said beekeeping has a high learning curve. Remember when I started? Eight years ago. As bright as, as you say, as smart as you say, I, I failed. I did not my hive did not last till the next Saturday or whatever at the week. <laughs> you know, they didn't you put Sorry, them in the back. Fly if it, if it fly if yeah. How they get out? What do you mean you gotta leave a hole for them to go? I said they be like, here, yeah, maybe yet. They walk out, may like this house he built for me. Um may like this. Let me go, see, let me go. He can go his business, let me go. See you be them just Hang, hang, cage the queen. She could come with us. Let me go. We're going with everybody. Left the comb. We're going. They just, they just run by the business. Well, I guess they find a better spot. Sorry, baby. Okay, so continue. Yeah, so that's the first thing. Get at, at least some sort of knowledge. Then you get your protective equipment. 
Or when I say protective equipment, I mean your suit, whether it's, you know, the long sleeve, jacket looking, hoodie looking, mm -hmm. or if you want a full suit that includes the pants, go down to your ankles, and then you put on some boots. You just wear your full suit every time you go in there? No, no, I ain't got time for that, man. You just wear your headpiece? Yeah, most most times. Uh, unless it's my bees. If it, it, it depends. It, your it, bees, it, no, you, you think, and they gum. They gum what? You, you ever see a tiger that you're guaranteed won't bite you? No. Okay, well then, you know, just just not a sting in it. Sting in it? Yeah, that part of it. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> you hear <laughs> that, Sandra, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> not all the time, but it just, it just depends. It comes with the territory. Yeah. If you're going to keep bees, you're going to get sting. Yeah. You can't um, take it personally. I've done hair removals, and after I start in there two minutes, I just take off my veil, I'll throw back my veil, because I can't see in there with the hood on, so bees flying around and... People 20, people 20 feet away watching and videoing and here, uh, bees landing me here and you pick out the heel, you pick out the bee and you put it down and you crush it so you don't turn on and sting you and go back to what you're doing. So if you want to get started in beekeeping knowledge. Protective equipment. Protective equipment. Actual equipment like hive, the hive bodies. I promote the Langstroth system because you have movable frames, you can inspect them. Um, there is also Layen, which is more like a UK or English version of it. Still movable frames, but a different dimension. And after that, you want to get bees. You mm, Back up a little bit. Before that, you need a good location. Good is relative, so you need Not one where people live. Uh, and if it's where people live, you have to have certain preventative measures. Like in certain islands, we have there is code, you or policy where hives should be at least a hundred feet from a, from um, a passage where a high traffic area, where there's foot or vehicular traffic. You should just don't go where people live, cause I don't want my neighbor to have no bees. But I bees coming, mind, where, but bees coming you where get we honey live. Too. Huh? You get honey too. Yeah, but. For, for but, me, but, but, I just but, but frighten. Bees come in where, I just where frighten. People live. Bees that come is in where true. Bees in people roof and people eve and I could uh, bees in Newton, bees in Taylor's, bees in Port Zante, bees in the church roof over there, bees over there in Greenland. And Land. then, <laughs> girl, bees in the square, bees just Hello. come and swarm every and other year. They got a swarm in the year. And in, in the square. In response to that, we have bee removal because we fear them. We don't know how to coexist with them. We don't know how to peaceably, you know, say, okay, that's your space over there. Yeah, you can't make them steady either. Because they're they, they world class trespassers. They ain't got access to go through your fence. They, 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 the sky is their domain, you know? And you can't <laughs> really stop them. From okay, the sky. then, exactly. I'll go after them in the sky. They just fly higher. Yeah, okay. But I don't think we really finish it though. So once you have suitable land, su suitable location, so somewhere that is not obviously a safety risk, then you get to site selection in terms of whether it's going to be shade, open, open area, that kind of thing, and then you start to set up your hive body. You have your orientation in terms of how you put down your box, whether in relation to the sun, uh, those kind of factors, and then you need bees. Are you going to do it like the old time way? You're going to do a hive removal so you can get the bees so then you can domesticate those and start? Or are you going to get bees from a beekeeper? And I'll put it that way. Whether you're going to get bees from a beekeeper through whatever means. Whether you're gonna, he's going to gift you, you're going to purchase them. Or you can like buy bees on Amazon. Amazon? No, no. You can buy bees. I, I would not encourage him. I do, it is illegal. I, all CARICOR, all OECSDs, it should be illegal to import bees as of... 97 or something like that. Uh, as of 1970 or something And when you like say import them, do you mean like from anywhere outside of the territory yeah. that you're in? Yeah, there should be no, in, there shouldn't, I don't think there is even allowed intra-regional transport of Why bees. Why is that? Because I just thought about bees can carry like bee diseases, bees can carry, you can damage whole ecosystems with, bees are life, bees are animals, so bees got their own pests, their own diseases own problems so i don't want to import bees from suriname and then mm -mm. cause a whole catastrophe in exactly. Kitts. and suriname is in south america suriname chances that they have yeah so chances that they have africanized bees are ah, the africanized which is mixed with scutinella um 
a different kind so of So if they come so here, let it be that they make it cross the ocean and come by themselves. Uh, that doesn't, that usually doesn't happen. Bees fly three miles normally foraging and they can go up to 10 miles based on the amount of food they have in their stomach. But so to come from there, they got island hop and the gap between the islands after after Trinidad coming up there, the gap too big. You got to come on a boat or something like that. Container boat could bring them. You could, a swarm could hitch on, on a container and come up uh, them kind of things. But I don't think from St. Louis, from whatever island below St. Louis, I don't think there's Africanized bees in the archipelago from there you go back up to, I think, um, Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico, go back up to Miami, I think has some sort of Africanized bees. Not Jamaica, no. I, d I don't think Jamaica has Africanized bees. Mm. Interesting. But Miami does. My, Miami and some of the U.S. definitely. One last question. Beekeeping can be a career path. Right. What are, give me like three different careers, three different avenues. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Let me. I'm a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And I can go into education planning. Mm -hmm. I can become an entrepreneur yep. and have my own school. I could become an education author and write textbooks, reading books, etc. And I can be a classroom teacher. If you're a beekeeper, mm -hmm. tell me three different things you can do. Um, okay, so just keep into bees. And I might diversify. Um, as a beekeeper, you can specialize in honey production. Mm -hmm. You can specialize in queen rearing. You could... Sorry, what's that? Queen rearing? Mm -hmm. Just what it says. Um, the production of, of queens. Like, you explain it no way, no way, mean. <laughs> you just rough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is... Okay, a queen is one of the... One of the most important things to beekeeping, uh, a honeybee colony. So, the technology or the techniques of queen rearing could put you way ahead in beekeeping like I don't have to I don't have to run behind colonies because I can rear queens mm -hmm. I could turn once I have the capital or the, the capacity the bee the boxes the bees I could turn a colony of one into probably sustainably five and if I'm really, really stretching it, probably 20, depending on how strong that colony is. So I so once you have a queen, the rest can come? No. You have to have enough bees to go with that queen to get her mated and then to build back out a colony. But the colony could be small, and then they grow, they grow, they grow. So over development. Time, over time, exactly, to become strong enough to produce honey. Hmm. So, so a community builder. Uh, over time, with inputs. Yeah, so you could be honey producer, you could do queen rearing um, and specialize in genetics, or you could just be a queen rearing for production. They just need queens. So after that, you can do textiles if somebody wants to get into making suits. Uh, it could just be a veil, a decent, sturdy veil for persons who are comfortable with just wearing a veil. If persons have better textile skill, they can produce a whole jacket. Um, if the metal workers, they want to get in, whoever good with welding, stainless steel, all the equipment that you use for processing needs to be food grade, so most time it's stainless steel. So persons can get into that, pick out the little easier things to do, hive tools, that metal crowbar looking thing. People could just start sheet metal and, yeah, sheet metal is a little rough, but if you could get something a um, little thinner than a quarter inch, quarter inch stainless steel. I think steel you need to come to you beat one some month. No, no, no. That's, a That's bit too much. much of. You could call in, young girl, come out the mountain. You could call <laughs> in. <laughs> and we could do B talk. Um, and now, see the other stations, they're going to want teeth with ID. Well, they could get do it. They got other beekeepers. I don't know if they can speak like me or they can. But there are definitely more beekeepers. But remember, y'all <laughs> have a bee association. See, so and so you need people else. to come into the bee association and you want the sector to develop. So, visibility, remember we said that? Because this sounds so fascinating. So Puma, it's new. So Puma, as the motto, as the yeah, because you is the president. Oh, okay. Pioneer and leadership responsibility and extra work you can be. We did be them all the time. You gotta be with us so. <laughs> so I have a question. So like what I heard that you're the president. Um, hold on, just before that. Remember, 
we came here on the department, agriculture, ministry, open the kind of vibe, and we on bees, we ain't said nothing about open day yet. <laughs> because you know? they're talking about... We- so okay. you just walk for the <laughs> Department of Agriculture. You are the bee specialist and you're going to be at the open day. And then he's going to have a little section where you could learn about bees in the that safe environment. So bees. you're listening to him and the conversation is going to take you, if you're interested in supporting him, at the Ministry of Agriculture especially at the open day. So if you have children and you want to introduce them to something fascinating and fun and appearance, you know, you look for things to expose your children to, to build their curiosity. That's why we have in the conversation. So open day covered. There we go. Okay, so I have a question. <laughs> department, department. Maybe it's really too much. Okay, department. I like, to, I like to make a split between the two, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, um, yeah, so you're the president. So... What are your plans to promote this industry? Because you said you want to build an industry. You want to expand it. You want to become something big. Like, because beekeeping is a part of agriculture, but I would say not very known to most people, mm-hmm. especially within this federation. So, like, what's your plan to promote it? Capacity development through membership and then increase membership. And then after that, the, 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 the implementation. Membership, membership the, to what? The, we are the implementation of, a, of a, a demonstration system. Visibility. Uh, it, it will come. The visibility will, will, will come or is coming. And the visibility builds a lot of other things, you know, because let's say Auntie Mishi have a rich boyfriend somewhere, a rich friend, Colin Ming on a rich boyfriend, okay? <laughs> a rich friend somewhere who, you know, is fascinating when, you know, interested in the actual B, but we act interested in the economy development, the department mm-hmm. development, the sector development. And they could send a little, you know, $1 million your way. Since it's right, shaped by investment, you, you got get... people interested in agriculture, apiculture, visibility. Go ahead. How are you going to get industry. those things? Like, if you're, if you're not promoting it on a scale, like, I, I get what you're saying, eh? like, things to come, but, like, things like what? Like, how are you going to promote it, like, to the general public? Because, like, you know what? What's the target audience? Like, it's youth, like, it's people, like, in their 20s, like, mm-hmm. people who already have a history and be keep, like, mm-hmm. what's, what's the plan? Okay, so... The thing is, Beekeepers Cooperative does have a fa- have a Facebook page. Um, it is SKBs, and the the plan is when not when as as things line up and we are able to to push out some of these plans, then uh, not even then as we go along, you you introduce the the plans and you introduce those those things that are running so that persons are aware this is what's happening. And they can get they can get access to or they can they can reach out they can interact to to be more aware more informed. Okay, so I heard you promote one of your social media platforms. Do you have an Instagram page? No, they, we, we do not. Just I thought Facebook. about it yesterday and then I was like, You need a piano, see? Y- yes, I. You I need a piano. I, 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 we, we do. We, we need a piano. Um, that is one piece of the executive that is that we we do not and the beer association you know who are going to be one of the stakeholders the ministry and the department nothing you do is going to happen in isolation uh, most definitely and the department has the department and the ministry is is keen on partnership so yes i must say that and the association especially if he start to walk then and friend you up as soon as he start because you're going to fail and make a lot of mistake but when he start to walk mm-hmm. and it takes time yeah, they'll, they'll be welcome to to come and see the demonstration site. And, and partner. And, uh, yes. As a stakeholder, as an investor, mm-hmm. as, as, some, as an organization. Education gun partner. We Tourism it. gun partner. Right, because, you know, you teach agricultural science in, in mm-hmm. um, secondary schools and they just mm-hmm. take it to farms, they show you the chicken, but they don't show you bees. Yeah. You'll then be you're so, gonna have. You'll be so nice to walk through an orchard. You can have food SBAs. and one side, bees on the other, and then a research thing to say, well, this is what we compiled throughout the year. I can tell you what is blooming from from January to mm-hmm. to November, and then you can tell me, well, this bee disease or this bee has a pest, and what is the 
viral count. Or the then viral we're gonna have visual arts too. So somebody gonna study um, an exploration of apiculture and sync it through visual arts, and then we're gonna do textile art and do demonstration of you know like be be Hello. It out, man. Then we're gonna do creative drawing about the different types of hives and a study of the queen bee then you're gonna have ceramic and sculpture we're gonna be sculpting hive from different materials connection in every single mm -hmm. thing that you do but you're gonna talk about the bees and people need days. yeah people think facebook is enough like people want uh, things to noted, do noted. but we don't know like my mind i'm a teacher and i have a creative mind instinctively so i am constantly making connections i'm recording everything <laughs> so i journal i write every day as soon as i get up i write before i go sleep i write if you offend me i write in on your name and the offense <laughs> and the date and i take in a picture now writing I, I just write everything especially offenses i'm extremely petty i'll be like wait she do so and so and she should be like writing on everything yeah, you don't have to be a creative, like you said, like, you know, you could just... I mean, the writing long people. The recording? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's from... It's a, it's a piece of a sector that, uh, that we need to improve. I, I personally, I can hold myself out at times. So. But, but I'm not going to keep the bees, but I can record. Each of us have a That's value a to add. Mm -hmm. The economy, the, the, the collective, the community, like the bee. So the queen ain't going to walk her down, she part to play. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, if we live like the bees, because I ain't going in the bank to walk. I cannot walk in the bank. We're going to be $20 short, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> look right, do not stress me. It's only $20. And then they'll lock me up. <laughs> They're going to lock me up easy, because I'm going to be like, I can't manage. Not, do not stress me for not $20. The man say he give you the $20, you so can't find it. Just put it in, huh? <laughs> Lock yes, me up. A rapper, a recorder, uh, a photographer. You ain't even got to touch a behind. You ain't even got to touch yeah. the frame. Just make sure you're next to it so you hear what the person who doing the inspection say. Mm -hmm. And your hand may sticky with big glue so that you can write it down. There's big glue? Uh, it up. Properly, it's that. that um, I didn't work it any. But yeah, it's that. That's another product of beehives. That's why they stick and they sanitize all this stuff with its antiseptic. It's basically tree resins. That they chew up and add enzymes to and then plant. And then we could the, use the big glue to make structures in visual art, use it as an additive for structure making and peep talk the things, man. Right. You see how much like things I can do with what you so do as a teacher? Right. Yes. Just as a teacher, my mind can expand and build curriculums and plans of learning. And this is just one mind. So this is just one mind. Move, right in meeting you for a very short period of time and so the more that you become vi and this is why visibility a responsibility to visibility and amplification is important Absolutely. we like to say people nothing da 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 i may want people know and people bad mind everybody gonna do what everybody got do that that your business if this is what you choose to do with what i bring into the table by all means jesus gonna deal with you and i gonna rise on my mountain it has to happen how we gonna happen Mm. Definitely. All right, so Mr. Tweed, we're gonna call you back because this is very fascinating. Okay. And okay. next time I'll come in a different capacity. However you want to come, you come, but please come back. We need you to come back because we need visibility, we need amplification. Saying it's need to know about the bees. And you don't have to leave the mountain. You could just pick up your cell phone, call in, and we do a segment while you're home. Technology. That's what you say, right? Uh, All right. Blessed Mr. Tree. Uh, good night to everyone. Sianje? <laughs> Sianje is like, no, I'm not rapping the show. I am not rapping the show. Thank you very much for coming in. Chacha, we miss you tonight, Jalen. I love you especially. Um, Colin. Mommy, everybody, everywhere, remember when you're walking through your valley, you're going to your high places. Just put one foot in front of the other. And if you can't, put one foot in front of the other. Let them and roll. In the name of Jesus, have a good night and do a little bit of goodness for yourself and for somebody else. Fleming Product presents. Fleming Product presents.
Montoya's 31st birthday bash on Saturday, April 27th from 9 p.m. until featuring Trilogy 30 Street Vibes.